Welcome to Odd Socks. What I'm trying to achieve this year, we started last year in mid-Feb, we've got our first plot. I'd actually been waiting 15 years for an actual plot. So when we got one, we got quite excited and quite quickly we realised with the soil being the way it is, that we wanted to do a no dig. Um, it's a heavy clay full of stones and boulders and because of the open site, it floods very, very easy. I wanted to be able to walk down the allotment without literally gaining inches of mud on the bottom of my feet through bad weather. We started the process of no dig and one of the first things we had to start first off was the collection of cardboard. Now obviously cardboard is uh, something normally it's easy to come by but we actually had to get quite a lot which we started getting over time collecting from local shops local supermarkets, things like that, that, and we were able to get the cardboard. Then we had to try and find a way of getting hold of plenty of compost and wood chip. Now the wood chip, we'd kind of left it a little bit late and we were only able to probably get two thirds of what we actually wanted. Because of the price of compost, um, we focused mainly on a certain amount of beds. We left a large area that we were doing um, the normal till method, um, mainly for potatoes. And we actually put some corn in later in the year. And we also had a raspberry bed that I just actually put straight into the soil as well. But it was really problematic because of the brambles that we have on this site. It made it actually quite hard to distinguish between the bramble and the raspberry growing up. And there was a lot of competition, so this year we have moved that. So with the no dig bed, the whole premise is the cardboard suppresses the weeds. So you can actually lay on top of weedy ground. There's no need to dig before you lay down the cardboard, lie on top of grass, weeds, whatever needs to be. The only thing I will say is lying it across anything brambly. That proved quite difficult to actually deal with it came through everything so we tried to dig up as much of the bramble as possible and then you're putting a layer of mulch compost on top of the actual bed which is where your growing will be the cardboard will disintegrate over the coming year roots will be able to grow through that cardboard without any issues they'll push straight through and you'll have a good growing medium for it. Now, along the edges, we used wood chip for the paths. It was more economical. Um, we've managed to source now um, plenty of free wood chip. We get lots and lots and lots of it. So that's always a benefit. And it keeps our boots clean as well, especially in this awful wet weather. It is quite damp again today. And then literally you're plant, you're ready to plant on top. It's not rocket science, it's not hard. Yes, it can be expensive in the first season when you're actually building the beds in the first place. If you've got access to a compost bin already and you're thinking about going no dig, do it. It's a great, it is a great way of gardening. It really did cut down the amount of weeding that we actually needed to do, which was great made a big big difference in our gardening year yes you still get weeds yes you're still gonna have to pull up those weeds but it's so much easier than trying to dig up hard clayey claggy ground so much easier so with the wood chip you can kind of go straight up to the edge um, obviously you have cardboard underneath that as well and basically it just helps suppress so as an example, I'm going to show you something that we've done this year. Because we've been here a year, we've managed to get enough compost for another year's growth, which is great. So we've managed to put in an extra 
three or four beds from the compost that we made, plus top up the actual beds that we had last year. So by topping up, it's literally you're feeding the soil, basically replenish, replenishing the nutrients that have been lost through the growing season. Another good thing about no dig, it's not just the weeds, it also means you can heavily crop. Because of how you're treating the soil with respect, you're not digging it over, you're just removing weeds, you're feeding it once a year, it means it gives the soil all the goodness, the microorganisms, the mycelium, all that kind of thing that's all interlinked to help feed and grow healthy plants. Again, it's not cheap, but once you've done it, cuts down the cost dramatically. It's just the initial outlay of what you need in the first place. So as an example, last year we used cardboard and a lot of cardboard for a lot of our beds. And it was a great, great way of doing it. It really was. Then this season, we just top it up. As you can see, this is the top mulch that we put on. This is our own compost. It's actually breaking down quite nicely now. A bit clumpy, but it'll be absolutely fine to plant in. And we'll put on about two to three centimetres a year of the homemade compost, just to keep the nutrients in the bed, refresh them for the new season. And it also helps keep the weeds down as well. So we actually managed to find a manure heap that was about four, five years old. It was quite wood chippy. And to be honest, it still smelled of urine a little bit when you got very deep, when we got about two foot into it, three foot. It was quite strong. But we thought it's free. Whether it was gonna work or not, we decided to go and actually put it into a bed. Now we mixed it through the bags of compost, so the bags of compost actually went further and we made the bed last year like that. Apart from two beds, which was the squash bed and the cucumber beds. We actually just left the manure as is, no compost added. Now, it did work. Um, I think it was rotted down enough for it to work, which was great. No soil on that. And then this year, we've just literally topped it up by, I think it was about an inch of our own soil, our own compost. So I'm looking at, hopefully that is going to feed it. And we won't have any issues this year with those beds, because again, I'm gonna grow squashes in there again. So this year, we've, instead of using cardboard on the new beds, we've actually used hessian. Now, I'm not guaranteeing this is gonna work, but we've given it a try. We were able to get, I think it was four pallets worth of old coffee sacks hessian coffee sacks which we looked at and thought well maybe it will work so we on the old potato bed which we had actually hand dug last year and never again no 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 i'm never doing it again we put the hessian down and then added the compost from our own compost bin which was chunky and we've added the wood chip that we've had delivered onto the pathways and at the moment we've had to recover the beds with hessian and heavy pallets because we get so many fox attacks <laughs> and when i say fox attacks it really they really have a field day in any compost that's freshly laid there was holes the compost had been spread all over the wood chip we'd lost half a bed they'd had a field day. Now we do have, I think three or four families of foxes on this one site, and there's no way, no way, we're gonna ever do anything about it. It's just part of nature. Sometimes we have to just deal with it. I'll show you the beds. Okay, so these are the beds, which you wouldn't think were beds. Now, as you can see, you can see the wood chip which is quite leafy green I'm not that fussed about it it's no major issue but where the pallets are is where the new beds have actually been put now this compost is about six inches or so that we've laid and that's roughly what you're looking for on your first 
bed you want about six inches of compost on top of your cardboard or in this case on top of our hessian another reason why we've covered with hessian is to help prevent weeds again it's a bit of an experiment this year and you'll find that a lot we do like to experiment sometimes it works sometimes it really doesn't work so we've got three nice wide-ish beds and the funny thing is on these little Mahessian donuts last year I planted some rhubarb from seed and they grew very very well but because we left it so late in the season the plants had died down so I had to kind of semi-guess where the rhubarb was for when we put the wood chip on so I didn't overly smother the new rhubarb so that was a fault on my own case not enough forward planning because they'd gone into the clay soil last year did quite well for the first year for the first season so just a little bit of a hessian donut around the outside of it just stopped majority of the wood chip going on when we were relaying the actual wood chip paths themselves so this year we've got an extra three beds four beds i think it will be we've got space for a polytunnel which we're going to build from scratch which we'll actually do a video on now obviously there is more to no dig beds than what i've roughly gone through in this little intro vid you're suppressing the weeds with some kind of membrane don't use plastic don't use proper weed membrane because you want your roots of your plants to actually be able to go through to the soil below and then you put your good compost on homemade if you can do homemade or bought now we found for these beds that it was I think it was about six or seven of the larger bags for each bed to get it to about six inches deep I think we had two beds that was a lot less than six inches we still managed to grow it grew we managed to grow um, beets celery all sorts of carrots all sorts of bits and pieces but we chose the stubby carrots the chantillys things like that the premise is suppress the weeds put your compost on top and grow and yes you can literally sow straight away into your no dig bed there's plenty of really good advice out there for no dig now last year was our first year of trying no dig and we got a lot of crop considering it was a trial year we wanted to actually see whether one the soil that we'd bought or the manure pile that we actually dug was actually going to be okay and we weren't going to have any of that weed killer in it from the horses or the donkeys I think they were but everything we planted grew and cropped not to say we didn't lose a lot from white fly and black fly and aphids so this year we're going to be looking at ways to actually deal with that mm -hmm. 